Hello again fellow traders and welcome back to the channel if you've been here before if you're just now finding the videos or just now finding the channel welcome uh, if this is the first video that you're seeing of mine I would recommend uh, heading back to the start of the 101 playlist because this is part two of the risk versus exposure uh, each lesson is going to build on to the one before it so we're gradually building up concepts and strategies uh, based on that uh, in this part i'm going to start applying some numbers and at the very end i'm going to jump into a chart i've already uh, got an example set up for us to show uh, how the cost and trading and hedging and risk planning are all going to affect your account and what you can expect to see during the outcome of the trade now, of course, before we get started, we have to go through the risk and disclosure about risk. I mean, no matter what strategy, method, or system, thought process, you know, whatever way you think or plan to trade, every trade has the same potential to win or lose. No results are ever typical, promised, or guaranteed. All trading is risky. You can lose your money and sometimes very quickly so act at your own risk I'm not a financial advisor i'm just some random person with a trading account all right let's get into first looking at what a normal trade is going to look like now of course we're probably all pretty familiar with this part uh, we're looking at gaining a better risk uh better reward than what we risk so let's say we have a thousand dollar account we're looking to risk one percent per trade so of course that's ten dollars per trade that we're taking going for a one to two risk ratio uh, that's going to give us a profit of twenty dollars per trade and at one to two r we need 33 percent or better in order to make sure the account does not lose uh, over time so let's say you do a little bit better than that and you get a 40 percent hit rate so of course you know over time you're going to slowly make money but that requires you to be very consistent over a lot of trades over a long time which is very hard to do uh, and is often one of the reasons people would look to hedge for risk control because losing streaks and one-way trading will destroy the account when it comes into hedging you can actually be a lot more flexible variable and adjustable with your strategy your risk amount your size of positions um, and that's mainly because everything is based on your account equity before you ever make the first entry see when you're doing one-way trades once you're stopped out the trade is over you're now starting a new trade with hedging you open that position and either it wins or it gets hedged once it gets hedged the trade is still open so we're still on the same trade that's why we want to base everything off of the account equity before it starts this also saves a lot of trouble with trying to track multiple spreadsheets and prices uh, and the main thing uh, that's going to happen is you're going to end up with multiple entries so that's going to make a very long spreadsheet uh, you could actually end up finishing the trade in an opposite direction uh, you could have uh, certain situations where a certain news event will trigger a big push in the market and the price just basically runs away from where you originally planned to trade so by hedging and breaking things down the way I'm about to show you in hedging you can take advantage of being flexible and adjustable and you can vary things out uh, to try to actually create an advantage in your favor so taking those factors into account, we know that we want to try to take multiple attempts in case we're wrong. A lot of times what you can do to figure out this part here, how many full failure attempts uh, you want to try to work with. Uh, this, you can usually base this off of a strategy that you've already proven or your own experience. Um, so how many times do you typically get a trade right versus how many times do you typically get a trade wrong so for just the sake of a simple example i'm going to say that i i have a strategy that gets me correct about 30 percent of the time so i want to be able to try four times because i would think in that within those four times i should get it right once um and so basically all we're trying to do is 
maximize our advantage to get something right by having a large number of attempts. Now, the way most one-way trading is figured is you have your 1% stop loss, and then when you're trying to trade uh, for an over, overall profit over time, you can, you know, a lot, most people will figure about a 10% drawdown. Now, with hedging, you kind of can figure a little bit more because, of course, what we're trying to do is work with that drawdown, not realize it into a loss. Um, I will typically work with some much larger numbers than this um, with the strategy that I have, but I've also practiced it a lot. So I'm kind of com I'm a lot more comfortable with going with some bigger numbers. Um, this you're going to want to base off of how comfortable and confident you are with your strategy. But in most cases, you would typically want to try to plan to be wrong four or five times. Now, this first number is small. For this example here, that would be about a half a percent of the account for risk. Um, most of the time, you'll want to try to start with between a half and three quarters of a percent, at most one percent risk. And the reason being is each time you get hedged, the way I'm going to show you, you're going to want to add in another position. You also want to account for having room to add more positions because this is going to give you the advantage of setting something up more in your favor but each time you add in it's going to increase how much it costs to be wrong and this is going to end up going into your drawdown so basically once you reach this point you still want to make sure that you have some extra set aside this is going to be for some more advanced things that I'm going to show in a later video but for now uh, for just the basic strategy I'm about to show in the example here to demonstrate how the numbers are going to move in the account uh, just try to figure something along these lines where you want to risk about one percent or so at the most for your first position and this is uh, basically going to maximize the number of, att of attempts and start compounding um, and even though we're working with some small sizes, because of compounding, they're going to end up generating some pretty big results, as you'll see in the video. Um, and mostly what we're focused on while we're working with a hedge during these failure, uh, these fails and reattempts where we're adding, adding and trying again, trying again, trying again, basically our stop size, we're just basically going to take the pip. And the pip value that we're looking to use so like if we're looking for example i'm going to use an example of a euro usd it's one of the major ones that i'm 99 percent of the time trading uh, but with a us dollar denominated account that's 10 cents per pip per 0 0.01 so if i was to figure you know an example i'm going to use i'm going to figure a 30 pip stop and if I was working with a 0 0.02, then that would be $6 of risk. So when you're going to look at how much you're exposed in the market, it's a lot easier to look at your risk in terms of how much you're exposed. And that's going to work out about the same as if you were opening a clean, fresh, uh, stop loss type position. Okay, time to hop into some charts. I'm um, using Forex Tester 6. Uh, this one here accounts for costs, commissions, spread swaps. I'm going to use this to show uh, kind of a live account example of what you're probably going to see and what you're kind of planning for when you're trying to work out your risk. Uh, to start out with, I'm going to make sure that on our Euro USD we have all our costs properly set. Um, my broker uses a two point spread and I'm using a 500 leverage and this one here, you can also set the commissions. I pay two and you, this one also will apply your swaps in points. So this way all, ca uh, all trading costs are accounted for. That's one of my favorite things about, uh, Forex tester six. Uh, but now that we've got that set up, everything's good to go. 
Uh, let's go ahead and jump into some trades. So let's say that you, for example, have a small account, uh, especially when I'm testing or doing some things with the $100 accounts. I'll kind of more or less figure my risk as a dollar amount. It's a lot easier with smaller accounts to do that versus trying to use a percentage because if you're trying to risk you know, 1% on a $100 account, 10 pips is not going to get you anywhere. Um, that's just in most cases. Uh, a lot of times I would like to use a 25 to 30 pip stop on a Euro USD, so we'll figure about $3 of risk. So that's going to be a 0.01 with 30 pip stop or a 300 point stop. So to show the example of what we figured for our risk, let's say we, we probably figured we're going to try $20 on this trade and then we have to go to another method which I'm going to get into in another video and more advanced topics but let's just say you're figuring 20 bucks you're going to try this trade to catch some type of gain or at least a break even so you go and you look at the market I would scroll it back but it won't show up in the recording for some reason but basically you look and price has been kind of ranging around for a little bit you've got a range picked out let me see if this will work you've got sort of a range picked out you notice and you don't think it's really gonna push up much higher because it just it doesn't look very strong so what we're gonna do at this point is you analyze the market you assume that it's gonna go back short you're gonna go back into the range so you're just gonna start with a small position and we're gonna go ahead and just sell that there to try to trade for a for and going back in the range and because we're hedging we're just going to simply place a stop order a buy stop order and we figured three dollars so about 300 points or 30 pips and we just place that order in there and let's say you got something to do so you just walk away come back later on and you come back into something like this so okay you got hedged out uh, you didn't get that right. So now we're going to try to start working to come out of this original position. Um, notice in the beginning we had a $100 balance. We had $100 in equity with no open positions. And now once we start making some moves with our hedges, it's going to change our account balance, but it's not going to change our equity. So right now we're thinking that price is going to come back down. So of course we need to close our buy because if not, that's going to start losing value. So we'll close that out, and that increased our balance, but not our equity. We still have our three dollars and fifty-eight cent, or three dollars and eighteen cents of risk off that trade from our commissions and costs already in and applied. So what we're going to do is we're going to sell an additional point zero one, the same size that we originally opened with, and this time we're going to have six dollars of risk for our hedge order and we're going to have to place a buy stop for a 0 0.02 because we have point uh we have two of the 0 0.01s in already so we're going to have to protect both of those and do the same thing we're going to go with about a 30 pip stop 297 points 30 pips club pretty close um that's one of the beauties of hedging you don't have to be exact too often but what we're trying to do here now is we're thinking, all right, we had a breakout. We're going to try to come out of this with either a break even or some type of profit. We're going to look to see if price is going to come back and do a retest. So we're watching, watching, go into a new day, and suddenly we get hedged again. So it never even comes back to where we can get anything done so now you're looking at it and it's like okay i've already missed two in a row i'm going to get some type of certainty so now we're looking at it we got a real tight range going not sure what's going to happen but logic tells us that we're probably going to get some type of a retrace coming in soon so that's what we're going to try to use to get out of this hedge so now you see something like this as you keep waiting I went a little too far. But you, let's say you see something like that. You get a strong wick. It's come back below the level that you had picked out from before. And all right, you think this is a good spot to try one more time. So then what we're going to do is 
we're going to do just like before at the lower level, close out of the, out of the buy position, the hedge. And if you don't want to add any more risk, you could try to just place a same stop order style that you did here. But we've already got, we've only got $9.30 of risk out of the account. So that's not really that big of a deal. So we'll go ahead and try to do one more time and sell. So now we're going to try to just get uh, any kind of comeback to where we can get out of this trade at this point though because we're looking at a 10% drawdown against our starting balance uh, this is kind of not really going to be taken into account while you're trying to do this if you're trying to do a FTMO challenge or any of these other trading challenges uh, that will allow you to hedge this may become a factor but in personal trading this doesn't all I'm really looking at is our equity and how much risk we've already put in. So at this point, we're just trying to get out of this trade at this point back at our original equity amount. So we've got our got to make sure we put in our buy stop for our hedge at 30 pips. So we're going to try one more time and we still have not reached our limit yet that we had determined in the beginning for our maximum drawdown. So basically what's going to happen is if we get hedged again, then we're going to have $9 coming out of this amount here, and we're going to have about roughly $81 of equity. But third time's a charm, right? Of course it is, because I cherry-picked this one. But then you see now, just after a couple of hours and a small movement, we now end up right back where we started with our $100.89 in equity. Now at this point, you could choose to go completely flat because now we've basically recovered and saved that loss from where we started originally down here. And that would be your basic hedge and basic use of a hedge. Now, because we didn't get hedged to get up here and we have these other three smaller positions with only a small amount of risk on them, we now have a compounded position. And this is one of the benefits of starting small and even with a low hit rate uh, with one-way trading, you can end up with a fairly large position with a small amount of risk. Now, let's say you want to try to go for a little bit more gain at this point. And instead of just going for break even, you still want to try for a short because this looks like it may go down. So you hang on just a little bit longer. Let price continue. And what do you know? It finally starts to fall down. There it goes. And comes down into the next level where you thought it might reverse, which is one of the best places to use the hedge. And one of the best places to start looking for a trade if you're trying to hedge. So now at this point, because price has come back, we have our compounded positions. We have now made an equity gain of $28.07. And at this point, you may definitely want to close all of your positions and orders and realize that gain to the account. <laughs> so as you can see in a short time, even being wrong multiple times in a row, as long as you're controlling your risk, the way uh, you planned it out from the very beginning, you can stay within your limits, get a fairly good position, and realize the benefits of the hedge to either get out up here at break even, where you got that little bit of down motion, or you could continue to hold and see if you can get more out of the trade. Um, you may, but that's just a basic rundown of what we're trying to do with hedging and how we can plan out the risk for the duration of that trade. Okay, uh, hopefully you got a good look at what a basic hedging strategy might look like and a good way to apply all the basics we've talked about up to this point. I'm going to go ahead and put this back on the screen real quick. If you don't have it, uh, you may want to grab a quick screenshot of it. This is going to basically just show you in, in plain English what's happening with your money in your account and how you can move it around in your account. Uh, and that's going to basically conclude it for the basic risk video. Uh, just make sure you keep in mind that 
while you're hedging one of the key things is to never lose your ability to open a new position that's kind of why I was referring to that a little bit extra there a little bit later on when we get into advanced topics we'll use that extra hundred dollars to basically handle going over our limit uh, and basically use that as a second chance for the hedge uh, there's a way to do that as well uh, but the basic example that I just showed is pretty close to kind of what I do um, basically I'm just looking for any kind of forward progress at that point while I'm doing that and basically try to manage my drawdown by getting some kind of small gains along the way that way by the time I do get to my large position I've got plenty of room to work with um, but that's going to conclude it for this video if you found some value in it give a thumbs up subscribe for more I'm gonna definitely be posting a lot more videos down the road I've got a handful planned out already and share this with somebody else who you think may be interested in edging and may be able to find some use out of it uh, for now I'm gonna wrap things up and I'll see you on the next one